Welcome to the Guy Pie Podcast, featuring Anthony, Chris, John, Sean, and Mark. This is a weekly podcast where five guys come together to make the ultimate conversational pie about the games they are currently playing. Welcome to the Guy Pie Podcast. I'm Chris. Joining me today is Anthony. Hey. And John. I just want to say that Banana is my favorite game. Uh, out of context, for no reason, I'm not being held at gunpoint by a sentient banana right now. Um, yeah. Do you know who the bananas in pajamas are? Please Blink don't twice. Talk about this. Please, please don't talk about this. Surprisingly, Sean and Mark are nowhere to be found. And if I remember correctly, there were two bananas in pajamas. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right. <laughs> Going into our first topic, well, nobody is held at gunpoint. Uh, Marvel Rivals. So I'll go, I'll go first. Like I'll go with uh, the order of which we received our codes because that'll go from like the most played to like the least played and all that. So I'll start us off. Um, I went from uh, like the beta, not really caring as much if I got into it because it was just like, oh, it's just it's just a beta like nothing really to gain for it and then sean told me that there was a exclusive venom skin you could get from playing it and then i immediately went i need to play this fucking beta my head all costs um i can't believe how hooked i am on it <laughs> like it's genuinely such a fun time uh and i think the most the thing to give this game the most credit toward is i'm having a fun time and I'm not always picking Venom, right? Like, it'd be one thing if I'm just playing the game just to strictly play as him, but there are so many more fun characters that I enjoy playing as. Like, I really like the Punisher, Star Lord's good. Um, the Ice Healer, Anthony, that you've been playing, she's really awesome and fun to play as. They just added two new characters this week Thor and Jeff the Land Shark. Uh, for, for a beta, it's pretty surprising how much you have access to, because, like, it's not like they're holding back in terms of characters to play as. We have a huge variety to access, which is freaking awesome. But um, yeah, uh, the gameplay's fun. Oh, it's a blast when you're in a large group together. That's for sure. Because like when randoms are picking certain roles, and then like one of the randoms takes a healer, and then it puts all the other weight on like Ant, like say Anthony, all the weight gets put on you. And you have to go overboard with healing. That gets a little tricky, but... uh, I mean, to your credit, you've been putting in those heals. You've been putting those heal numbers in. Hell yeah, dude. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, initial thoughts. I I was looking. I'm already like 16 hours into that beta right now. So I've already put a quality chunk of time into it. Uh, All right, John. So you got the code next. Uh, what What are your thoughts on it so far? Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, I do like to play as a specific character, which is Scarlet Witch. Um, one thing I've noticed, though, is like if you're not in a group of people, it definitely isn't as fun being teamed up with a, an entire group of randoms. Uh, usually it goes one way or the other. The other is normally like nobody doing what they're supposed to do. I know it's a game, whatever, but... Um, mainly it's like everybody will pick an attacker or nobody will like heal at all, or there will be one tank. So all the pressure is put on another tank. Um, I think personally, like out of, out of, like, I enjoy the game. I, I enjoy it more playing with like a group of people that I know, but one thing I should, they should implement is like overwatch. If you have two tanks already, somebody can't pick another tank. Like same with like healer and attacker there has to be some kind of like structure to a party and i mean like if you're not playing ranked i guess it really doesn't matter but still it kind of ruins the fun for some like anybody um when you're just getting demolished because you have one random on your team that's picking a third healer or um like because if somebody picks a healer and is not healing obviously somebody's gonna have to take the place of that healer and and do all the healing you know what i mean so if you 
could implement something like that. Like two people could pick a healer. So the random doesn't pick a healer. <laughs> like it, it would be, uh, it'd be a much better option and it's closed beta. So, I mean, I'm sure they're getting all this feedback. Um, yeah. And I'm sure anything I'm saying right now is going to be fixed at some point. Yeah. Like when it comes to the, f- the full release in 2025, I'm mm-hmm. interested to see based off feedback and, Obviously, like more characters they introduce, where the state of the game's at then. But Anthony, moving on to you, because uh, as you mentioned the other day, you've never really played a hero shooter to this extent where they have roles of like healing tank and DPS. So, what what have your thoughts been on it so far? Yeah, I mean, initially, you know, we rewind. However long ago, uh, Sean had a access to the alpha, and uh, he streamed it a couple times, and I was watching, and the gameplay looked fun, but it was just one of those things where I'm like, this seems like like I'm enjoying watching it, right? And knowing myself and the games I generally gravitate towards, I'm like, this is something I might not enjoy playing, but like it looks like it's it, I had enough fun watching it as Sean was playing that I'm like, I know it's going to be free. So I'm willing to try it out when it comes out. And then obviously the closed beta comes in, out, Sean gets in. So you guys are, you know, P back in the codes. And then it's like, okay, well, you guys offered me a code. And I'm like, okay, well, I might as well I'll join in now since, like, I'm not going to say no, uh, since I already planned to try it when it does come out. So I'll just get that over with now. Not necessarily having too much hope for getting into it. I figured out, I, my initial plan was like, okay, I'm going to play an evening with you guys to, to like justify the fact that you guys gave me one of the codes. And then I'm, it's probably going to be it, you know? And, uh, it definitely wasn't that like, it was, uh, I jumped in, I went straight for the, the healer class because I'm like, I already know, even though this plays differently than like a, a shooter, third person shooter, first person shooter, I just know how I am with PvP games, and I just get very frustrated. I get annoyed, um, and like I'm not able to like endure those feelings through the progress of like developing the skills to play the game. So I, I initially, I instantly went for the healing role because that's something different. Where it's like. You're still shooting and I still have to attack enemies, but I would say depending on the group we're fighting or our team composition or how well we're doing, like I could be doing as little, like I could have a 50-50 split between healing and, and fighting or sometimes like you mentioned where we have a random that selects the other healer and I end up doing 90% of the healing and they just end up acting like they're DPS when they're not. Um, but yeah, like I just, I, I found it really enjoyable. I, the part of it I think I mentioned was like, because it's like I'm still playing where I'm fighting, but instead of like of trying to hit a target that's trying to dodge me, I'm hitting targets that want me to hit them. So like, it just feels nicer to connect with my targets so frequently, even though I'm not damaging them, I'm uh, healing them. But I also did find like the one ability uh, Luna Snow has where you pop your ability in for like 10 seconds you like clap your hands to do this projectile and it's like increased damage on the enemies or increased heal on your allies. And man, you can beam headshots on the enemies like pretty fucking easy with that. Um, and it does quite a bit of damage too. So, um, and then just the fact that her ultimate is basically a roaming well of radiance, like from destiny, um, was just awesome. So I, I had a lot of fun playing as a healer. I literally haven't even tried DPS or tank. I would probably will at some point. Because um, it's like, you know, think of Destiny, right? Like, I played Warlock until I got really into the game. And then eventually when I was so into the game, I, I stepped out of my comfort zone to try playing the Hunter, or try playing the Titan. Or, or even on a smaller scale, the subclasses. Like, I never use like arc for example but i play so much now that it's like i'm willing to step out of what i want like so i'm sure at some point i'll try those the two other um archetypes or whatever but for now i'm as long as you guys let me 
take one of the healer roles in our group, I'm going to be doing that for the whole fucking time. Uh, I definitely got to swap the hotkeys because my primary attack of healing is the trigger. And as you can imagine, when shit's going crazy, I'm sitting there. Well, I play like this. And I'm like, this is me. Like, I'm moving around going like this and the matches are like 10 minutes long so like last night dude i had to ice my hand so like i need to switch these because the r uh the r1 it's the one where i buff my ability for 10 seconds that's used it probably once every 30 seconds whereas this is spam so i want to switch them because this is way yeah. easier to fucking spam than than the r2 oh shit what am i doing i i was i was uh when i was playing um a bit of stellar blade earlier today and i was hitting like r2 i was hearing like a squeaking on my edge i'm like i really hope i didn't fuck it up from playing too much like marvel rivals because it's like that with all characters right like your most used attack like your basic attack is tied to that so like you're consistent you're consistently like even with me like with venom when like i'm in the shit I'm just spamming the R2, the tendril attack, just trying to DPS what I can. But yeah. I think what I'm going to do is assign it to like the back paddle on the right. Oh, the nice. Sense edge to just like yeah. make it more organic and not risk. Yeah, just it up. less movement of the fingers too. Like, because that's the thing with the with the trigger, you have to make, let it come out so far before you push it back in. Where for me, the R1. Will be my play because I don't have the edge, but yeah, for you, like that minuscule finger movement underneath, so probably way better long term. So I don't want to interrupt you guys, but um, go ahead. You you any any character you can just hold that button down and continuously attack. Oh, sh- <laughs> I didn't just say that last night. I was literally <laughs> like talking about that. I'm like, I gotta change my hockey's. My fingers I are down. I was too into the game to really like <laughs> say anything, but yeah, you can, even with Venom with his tendrils, you can just hold it down. Oh, okay. Son of a bitch. Okay, so yeah. I might not switch them then. Oh, well, I'll see how it feels. Um, you know what I think it is? I went from Destiny, which has full auto settings where like you hold down the trigger. Then I played Remnant 2, which I don't know, there might be a setting for that, but I haven't been using it. So I have been. Pulling, it's like I'm using the pistol in Remnant 2, right? And I'm like, bap, 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 bap. so I went from Remnant 2 to this. So like my, in my mind was just like configured for the tapping approach. So I didn't even think in, to try and hold it down that whole time. But that I was, was God. I was doing the same thing with Rocket with the healing orbs. Yeah. And and my my hands started to hurt, and I'm like, what if I just hold it down? And I held it down, and it just kept like shooting. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, that's a game changer. So that was honestly the only complaint, you know, as someone who has little, you know, stake in the game of hero shooters. So take my opinion for what you want. But that was really the only complaint I had. Oh, no, there was one other one. The fucking Jeff. Where he eats up oh, a group yeah. and then he just carries you to the edge of the map and spits everyone out off the map. Like, that is just cheap as fuck. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying to nerf that, but like... The player getting launched should have some way to to try and respond to that to prevent themselves from falling off. To, so not saying like, get rid of that because I'm sure that's probably the only real like. Do you take damage when you're in there? I can't remember. Like when he sucks you up, are you damaging over time? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so then I would say either if if they're doing that because this it's not doing enough damage and that's the only way they can utilize it, they need to change the soup. Like I don't know if it's increase the damage or maybe it is okay right now and people are just abusing that uh situation and throwing people off the map but i don't know i don't know if that's a common approach in hero shooters where people have ways that you can just throw a bunch of people off the map in one go but i personally think it's pretty cheap um other than that yeah the only thing that was pain that's not cheap but just a pain in the ass was uh What's her name? The character you, John, the character you plan on maining. Oh, What's Scarlet Witch. Oh, Scarlet God. Witch. Yeah, her Superman. It took me like almost the entire night to register in my head. When you hear her, her audio cues start up. You need to fucking run because her AOE. As soon as you hear her say the second syllable, chaos, 
you're already dead. <laughs> like if if you didn't respond and when she first goes, yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't so like it. It feels cheap in the moment when it's like, you know, shit's going crazy. But looking back, it's like okay, that's that's just something you have to learn to counter. I, I whereas the sharks guys thing, it's like there's no way to counter that. You know, it's like if there's a ledge and he grabs you, you're going off the ledge. So I do think. Know- uh, oh, go ahead. No, you go first. Well, I was just gonna say. So I do know there's been at least one time where I personally countered um, the shark, uh, like the launching off a ledge. But that's only because I was playing as Venom, and as soon as he spit oh. me out, I used the web swing to get nice. back onto the thing. But yeah, uh, what were you gonna say, John? Uh, the thing is, Scarlet Witch, she's really squishy too. So when she starts up her ultimate, you can actually like communicate with your teammates to just focus fire on her and you can kill her before it even happens it happens to me so often oh really well that's good to know i gotta get down like try to more smoothly being able to like ping as i'm fighting like you know how we were trying to ping spider-man constantly because man he was a pain in the ass like if someone's good with spider-man he is the worst enemy i I found between all the people we fought (laughs) <laughs> every time he, he just came swinging through he was like Spider-Man <laughs> <laughs> it was the point where we were like we were so like on edge for Spider-Man we'd see our own team Spider-Man and start pinging we're like oh wait that's our Spider-Man <laughs> but yeah I had a, a lot of fun um, it's not something I would see, like would become something that I would play frequently like a Destiny substitute but it's something I would definitely be willing to jump into like at least two to three times a week, um, more or less, um, like when, when it comes out, uh, when we get, you know, a bunch of us on and stuff, it's not something I don't think I would jump in solo. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm surprised I had as much fun as I did. Yeah. I think for me, like, I don't mind solo, but there has to be like the chase for me. Like right now the chase is the battle pass, right? get into that venom skin so like in the early days obviously with sean's limited schedule before we got you guys codes i was just doing like a lot of solo by myself as sean was doing a lot of solo by himself right uh so like i I didn't mind it um obviously the experience is absolutely amplified like you said when we're all playing together because it's just better communication and we're just laughing a lot of the time at just the, the stuff that's happening. I will say the thing that surprised me most is um, usually like in a game like Overwatch, I uh, I had the class that I specifically would want to play. Like a lot of times it would be Mercy. Like I just wanted to do heals. Like I wouldn't mind playing like May or playing like Roadhog. Where this one, uh, with this game, I have characters in each category to the point where as like when we were playing last night right i would purposely just wait i would wait to see what our team composition was and then just make this my decision off there because i was just like i'm honestly good for whatever like very rarely have i found that in a game where i like the characters that much or i'm just willing to be like fuck it like I'll, i'll i'll do tank like i think i spent most of the night actually just running venom as tank which i had absolutely no problems with because he's I was genuinely concerned. Like, obviously, Venom's going to be a tank, but I've never really liked playing tank characters. But he's just a fun time to play us. I like him a lot. And I, I found the trick to his ultimate, because for the while, his ultimate was pissing me off, because like it, it doesn't do like a lot of damage. It does like half the damage, it, it seems, to characters. But the trick is I got to like swing, do my pounce attack from the sky, hit him, do my tendril extension that slows the enemies around me, proc the super, and then bite everybody. So it's like, it's basically, it's like a combo I have to kind of do to ensure the kills. But I think that's what I appreciate about this game is it's layers into like, it's just, I'm just not mindlessly tapping. I'm thinking about the moves that I'm doing, right? To like help the team, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like I was not, as strategic in in mind as as you're talking but there was at one point once i kind of got like the understanding of how this game works what i'm supposed to do there would be times where like 
I would use my ability that increases my damage or healing. And I'm like, okay, everyone's like reasonable. And then I would just look for people in the sky because I could one hit from that ability was a good chunk of health. And usually you guys are hitting them too, but like they're pretty hard to hit. So that a lot of times they get in a lot of damage from the sky before they get taken out. And a lot of times, like I think most of my kills, uh, at least half of them last night were from killing like t well i mean i didn't solo kill them but i w i ended up getting like the final hit on the, a bunch of them just by like healing heal healing pop my thing look up do like four or five of them and then look back down and you know so i'm getting a lot better with like trying to balance the combat because i do realize like it's it reminds me a lot of um the way john's talked about healing in final fantasy 14 where my job i don't think is just to heal you like I think once I'm proficient at doing that, I need to be attacking as often as I'm able, you know, to really utilize the role I'm doing the best I can. So, which is cool, like, because my job is healing, but then I, I just take on like little snippets of the combat aspect, which will be a nice transition for when I actually try full on com straight combat with the damage or, or the whatever the tanks do, so. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Been, been fun. I think one of the best things too, especially for you is like the beta, including the bots practice thing, right? Where you can get comfortable yeah. with these characters and not feel stressed out. Like, you know, like not just jump into a random character into PVP. You could be like, or have them go fuck around with like some bots real quick. Yeah. I will say too, um, for when it comes out, uh, well, I'm primarily only going to be jumping in like on evenings when you guys are playing and stuff. Depending on what the chase items are, like there will be potential for me to be like something I want enough to actually like jump in either more frequently in the week with you guys or potentially solo, depending on what they are. And it's probably going to be very specific things like a cool skin that makes my character look very revealing, you know? Like they do like a they summer have... theme set, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that that's the that'll be the key to get me to try and play. We willing to play solo. I just I just but... want a Venom summer outfit, and he's wearing like the Borat mankini thing. <laughs> it's just like the V that just goes straight <laughs> down. Uh, that that's the that's the that's the skin I want for him. That's it. That's, that's the chase. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, any final thoughts on this before we move on? It's great. Johnny, you good? <laughs> John? John? I don't know what the hell I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying something out and it did not work. <laughs> it's so tiny. I, I got to learn. I got to learn the thing. <laughs> All right, little all right. tiny guy. Uh, moving on. Uh, Remnant two. Um, I'll throw this one to Anthony first. What are your thoughts? On yeah, uh, I got a little bit of time earlier this week. Uh, still fun. The, the bosses are. I haven't. I've. I don't, I couldn't say how many of the bosses in the game I fought. It's probably only like a third, or not even maybe a quarter of them. But every boss, every new boss fight's been fun. Um, the uh, I haven't gotten too many new guns, which I've been really chasing, like uh, a really cool long arm. There was one long arm gun that Mark had that I wanted, but I don't know. I'd have to talk to him to where the boss is because uh, I did fight this boss with Mark at one point. But depending on some bosses, I guess depending on you know the dialogue or the way you kill them or the mechanic, I don't know different factors determine what item you get from them, which could be a different weapon. So we ended up getting a melee weapon from him, which was a cool melee weapon, but I wanted the long gun. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not paying attention to the story, like I mentioned, but like the, the gear progressions kind of, uh, seems to be mainly weapons. Like I haven't gotten too many armors. They seem pretty few and far between, um, mostly cosmetic. I almost, I feel like, um, besides like the weight class differences, uh, but I don't know. I, I don't know how much more time I'll get in it uh, the next couple of weeks, just because uh, 
with Marvel Rivals now kind of probably being for the next seven days or however much time's left. Um, like if I jump on and there's a several of you guys on, that's probably going to be what we play. Um, and then when I'm on my own, uh, I already don't play Remnant solo. So it's going to cut in a lot to my Remnant playtime, unfortunately. But the beauty of it is I didn't buy it, right? I got it with the PS Plus Extra. So I don't feel too bad about stepping away from it necessarily. Not to say I'm fully going to do that because who knows, there might be a night or two where I jump in. Um, like say I jump on and no one's on, but like say, John, you're you're on playing. Like I'm not going to just go and play something solo. Like I'll jump in with you. We'll, we'll run some bosses, whatever. Or if uh, if I catch Mark in the morning, or not morning, like, you know, lunch before work, I might jump in with him, you know. Um, so there's still potential, but it's not like in the forefront of my mind at the moment. Um, not to knock the game in any way. Like, it's, there's nothing to do with, like, the game per se. It's just kind of, you know, it's like the new shiny thing. Plus, potentially uh, revisiting Stellar Blade. So, because I never finished it. But, yeah. All right, John, how about you? Uh, I was just playing before my son went to bed and I hopped on here. Um, I, I like it a lot. I like it so much that I bought the physical copy when it came out. I played through the first game and really enjoyed it. Uh, I ended up buying the DLC for it recently. Uh, apparently, there's another one coming out too. So, um, The gunplay is fun enough where um, it doesn't feel as much as like a grind as it would if the gunplay wasn't as fun. Like it is a very grindy game if uh, if you try and like minmax or like um, like get a specific like item or whatever. Um, it can be it can be fairly grindy, but the gunplay keeps it interesting enough where I don't get bored. It's kind of like Diablo in a sense where like you could just make your character super powerful and just rip through everything. Uh, I got a gun from one of the DLC bosses that is just straight up like a laser. And its special ability is, like, you shoot a sand tornado that just absolutely rips. I use it on any kind of, like, elite enemy that appears. I'll, I'll just, like, pop a tornado and just start firing this laser into him. And, uh, yeah, I've been messing around trying to get all the, uh, the hidden, like, classes you can get. Some of them are really complicated to get, which is kind of cool, but kind of annoying at the same time. Like uh, Summoner. Summoner is the one I want. And apparently Summoner is like one of the more complex uh, classes to get. You have to like do certain things in a certain order. And like uh, you have to hit the same area multiple times, multiple times, multiple times, like hoping for a Blood Moon. Um, yeah, it's a game that I think I think that's my main game right now. That's what I'll be playing when I'm not playing Marvel Rivals. So, yeah, good time. And you guys can hop in whenever. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah i'm not sure where i'm at with remnant right now it's um when, when we when we do play together i don't get me wrong i have fun playing with you guys but like there are things with the game that don't really make me like kind of like urge to play it you know like i i think one thing i was telling anthony that was kind of i found disappointing so far and i think a lot of it does play up to like the whole rng aspect of things is for what we played so far, we've only gotten like I've only gotten so little of actual boss weapons. It's been a lot of like the mods and like the weapons are the things that I'm interested in. And like I've only found one boss weapon that I actually like using right now, and it's like that cube uh, bosses one, the one that makes the shield, and it's like an SMG. So it's like it's almost like a determine of like when we do these things when we kill a boss it's just like oh it's just like another it's another fucking mod or something like that and like there are things like the bow that you have where i'm like oh i really want to unlock that but then it's like i have to hope rng gets us to that point where we can get it right sooner rather than later it's not like which i get that's a part of the whole design of the game but at the same time it's like what if I have really shit RNG where by the time, like, say I'm playing and I'm close to getting the platinum, I literally get 
I'm able to get the bow like when I'm about to fully call it quits. So it's just those aspects kind of like hurt it for me. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not done with the game, but for me, it's on ice until the rivals beta is over. I think for sure. Um, once the beta is over, I'm definitely down to get back to it. Maybe like by then the things that are, have kind of bugged me, I'll kind of be like, Oh, whatever. And all that. I think the big factor will be, uh, from the time rivals hits to the time or ends to the time Concord comes out, it'll be like, if I get hooked into that loop, finally of remnant where I'm like, I'm committed to balancing remnant in Concord. So it'll be, uh, see how it goes. Who knows? Like, maybe I will be disappointed with Concord. Like granted I had fun with the beta, but like, maybe I'll be like, I won't be fully in on it. I'm like, you know what? I can do two to three nights of remnant a week kind of thing. But yeah, we'll definitely see. I don't know. Yeah. Not done with it, but like Anthony said, we got like seven days left with that beta. So that's definitely my priority, especially because I want that venom skin. Like I need it. Yeah. Um, one thing that may help with your uh, with that whole like RNG thing, um, you can actually like start almost like an adventure mode, and you can pick which area you want to go in. Um, so what you do is you start that specific adventure mode. Like you look up, you can look it up on the internet. Like which gun you you would be interested in. Start that adventure mode in that area. Uh, as soon as you start that area, you can tell what instance you're in. If it's not the instance you want, back out, try again, and keep doing that until you get the instance you want. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind, like, when the bait is over. Maybe I'll start fresh, give it a go like that, try to get the bow to start off with, and then... But then, you know what sucks? Is then I'm starting a new character and I don't have that infinite ammo... Amulet. You don't have to start a new character. You just oh, you go don't? to the nope. You just go to the crystal and you oh. can select like start a start an adventure and you can oh, do. Okay. All right, yeah, areas. yeah. So yeah, when the bait is over, I'll give that a go. I'll see how it is. Yeah, but yeah. For now, yeah, definitely. I won't be playing it for like the next week or so. Uh, any final thoughts on Remnant before we move on? No, sir. All right. Next up, No Man's Sky. So you uh, hop back in. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, John? I, I hop back in pretty briefly. Um, I plan on going back to it. Uh, I just kind of wanted to check up, like uh, check out the uh, graphical update, which I'm I'm pretty impressed with. Like they changed a lot and they added some new things to uh, the different like biome planets you can go to. They added like a lot more like safe planets you can go to where you can like build a base and not have to worry about like uh like a firestorm incoming or whatever. Um the game it's it's changed so much since launch that it, it's almost like a completely different game. Like for example, instead of starting the game in first person, they they like it was all first person at first. Instead of starting the game in first person, you actually started in third person now, which kind of like really makes it a different game oddly enough like <laughs> it's uh i i tend to like aim towards third person games a little bit more because you can actually like see your character and you can actually see the customizations that you add to it um another thing is uh i think they added like the the creature taming and stuff i want to i want to try that out a little bit more i played it briefly when it came out but i didn't really get the full extent of it because for some dumb reason, whenever I start playing it again, I'm like super confused at where I am. So I just start a new game. So so I have to go through the whole tutorial and then I go to different planets and different planets. So I'll play it like for for like a week stretch and then I'll stop playing it. Um, yeah, I think it isn't it free right now. I think it's free right now. No. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely worth checking out. If you haven't yet, it's less of a survival game, more of like a planet explorer. Um, it's worth like just trying out, seeing seeing if you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it, whatever. But yeah, it's a good game. Nice. I know uh, Mark brought this up a couple of weeks ago, Anthony. But like since then, any thoughts on No Man's Sky? 
No, not too much. Like I dabbled. I bought it fifty percent off, like a couple years ago, probably on PSN. Um, yeah, no, I I do occasionally dabble with survival, crafty style games, but I am, to be honest, like sci-fi as a genre for the most, not just games, but like in general, doesn't pull me. Uh, my attraction to it like too much like there's usually something else about it that if, like with star wars for example um i'm not the biggest star wars fans but what i star wars fan but what i did like about it was like the jedi and the lightsabers and like space magic basically right um not necessarily everything around it in the setting so the fact i may dabble with survival games sometimes but i didn't find much there for me uh, overall uh, maybe I'll give it another chance at some point, because um, I know it is co-op, which which might elevate the experience. Uh, but I'm just not looking for something like that right now, so I, I might not get that chance. Because like I know John's revisiting it right now, but the chances so one of you guys would want to revisit it when I actually want to try it, you know, which I had no idea when that would be. That like, might not be till like next summer, or this Christmas, who knows, right? So, so yeah, not not necessarily for me. Um, not to knock the game, like I've seen, what well, you know, arguably one of the top five game comebacks, right, from release to like what it became, right. So definitely respect for uh, there for that, but not necessarily for me. Yeah, they definitely had like the comeback of a lifetime from where they were at launch to like where they are now. Uh, um. Yeah, uh, I I can't remember what I said exactly uh, last time we talked about it. Yeah, but yeah, this uh, wasn't for me. I definitely can see why somebody would appreciate it, but it's just like the aspects of like just like the space traveling and all that. Like, I'm not too big on it, and I think that is one of the things that really hurt me with uh, Starfield, right? Like. Yeah, but um, no, it's cool that like you hop back in and you're having a good time with it. Uh, any th- final thoughts on No Man's Sky before we move on? I think you're muted, John. If you're saying anything, or, or you're just uh, shaking. No. Okay. No, I shook my head. I looked down at my phone and then I shook my head. <laughs> oh, I thought you like went to look down at your mic and go like no or something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. All right, so next up, it takes two. Anthony, you've been playing this with Link. How's that going? Yeah, it's actually been going really great. Um, he's been playing. I think I mentioned the last week, the week before, just with his experience, he's gotten in with different different Roblox games. Like I've seen his ability with the controller increase enough with uh, understanding the concepts of you know camera movements and moving your character, the jumping, which, you know, a lot of these universal mechanisms that are in almost every game for the most part. And he seems to have a grasp on on, on them enough that I'm like, okay, I'm going to start him on something. And uh, I dabbled a bit on some on my Switch, a couple different Mario games. He seemed to do an okay with Odyssey, hits some hiccups here and there. And then I, I've known about It Takes Two for a long time. Um... But I was like, and the thing is, like, I'm down to play games with him. But like, when he when he gets into a game, like he he just constantly wants to play it. So like, some some evenings, it's like every ten minutes he'll come ask if he can if he can play. And obviously, I don't just let him play games all day. Even though a lot of times I sometimes play games all day, but I'm not gonna let him do that. Um, and uh, so. Where was I going with this? Yeah, so the the only real downside so far is that so now that we're playing it in like session, I don't know, two hour sessions, give or take. Um, but now it's like outside of that two hour window. As soon as that session ends to the next session, every fucking hour he's asking if we can play. And, and it's like, dude, like I get it. I understand and I and I sympathize, but at the same time, I'm like, we can't like we have our li- like we have a household and and like responsibilities and then like he I'm like you I could set you up to play something on your own but like we can't play it so that's the only downside as far as actual playing though like he's gotten 
we like 95 percent of his role as the character he's playing he's been able to do granted there's been some obstacles like uh either like the puzzly platform or boss fight, whatever the mechanic is he has to do. Like there's been things like a, you know, uh, like a jumping puzzle we had to do where we had to do things individually. Like we might be there for 40 minutes. Okay. Um, and there's been a, like that extra 5% I was talking about that he doesn't do is sometimes like I'll have to take his controller and do a section for him. Cause it's too hard. Like there was one thing where you had to, jump an R1 to grapple onto this hook. Then you had to swing, let go, do your double jump, and then press square to do a dash to cover a long distance, and then hook another hook. And you had to do that like four times in the in, to get to the other side. He can do that mechanic, no problem, maybe to two hooks. But for him to like flawlessly pull that off four times in a row, the odds are pretty low. Because usually it's like he can get the first hook perfect every time, but to cover the jump distance and hook, that's where he's like, it's flip of the coin whether he'll make it, and he'll eventually get it. And then the jump from there to the platform is just you just jump. But when you have to do that fifty toss of the coin section four in a row, the odds just go down so low. I'm like, hey, we're gonna be here all night, so I'll just do it for him. But uh, and it's funny too. He's just like me, man. Like we do a boss fight and we lose. And then he's like freaking out and he's like, this is impossible. We can't beat this. And I'm like, let's just keep trying. And then like, I'm solving all this stuff. So he's not doing any of the brain work, like for the puzzles. Like I, I'm telling him what we got to do, um, which is actually cool. I will say from an adult playing this game, like this is a great game. Like the, the puzzles are challenging enough where I feel satisfaction when I figure them out. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, trying to get him to understand what he has to do, which hasn't been too bad. But the the boss fights have been really cool. Like, there's some cool mechanics. Like, they're fairly simple. Big thing is there's checkpoints everywhere. Like, you have, you got to get, let's say before a boss, you got to get from point A to point B, and then point C and, and D and whatever. Like, it's not a checkpoint at point A and point B. It's like you have, like, eight checkpoints in between. So the fact that we die so much doesn't set us back very often because even boss fights man like there's checkpoints there's like health thresholds on the boss that are checkpoints so if you complete the first phase of the fight you have a checkpoint there so every time you die you start at the second phase which is just awesome it wasn't like an extra setting i had to turn i'm uh like to make it easier or anything but uh it was just like there from the start i don't know if there's like a hard mode you could pick where you don't have that but just from a base design, like this is such an ideal game for, for young kids. He is a little on the younger side. Like it's probably more geared for maybe like seven cause he's five. But, uh, I mean the fact like my age kind of covers his, what he's missing, right. Where I can jump in for him or just tell him what he has to do. Um, but it's been a really fun experience. Um, I'm not a big fan of platformers. So that's why I'm kind of trying to relegate it to like two hour sessions. Cause like, I want to enjoy the time, but I don't want to like be like playing it and just sitting there being like, okay, do this now. Come on. Like, I want to hurry up and get past this so we can stop playing. You know what I mean? I don't want to get to that mode because it's not generally a, no a genre I play a lot. Um, so yeah, two hour sessions. It's been awesome. And he's been doing really good. Uh, and he, and he flips out a lot, which is hilarious. <laughs> That's freaking funny. And it makes yeah. sense to do the two hour sessions too, because it kind of like makes it, it just ex it's extends your time with the game overall in terms of like, like weeks instead of like just like a like a weekend kind of thing, and I think it just makes especially for like you and Link, right? That's got to just like make it a much. Obviously, he's young, so he doesn't get it, but like for you two, it's a really good bonding experience for like how yeah. long it takes you to go through the game. Uh, well, it helps too. Sorry, one last thing. Uh, oh. It helps with the boss fights. Like with I, with the frustration I see from him, like with playing Roblox and stuff, and like getting killed in like like a, by a boss or a monster or something. Um, I was like that a lot too, and I didn't fully grow out of it. Like I've gotten better, but it's an opportunity I, I find where like I don't take this game seriously at all. So like that mentality for me for this game is not really there. But I see it in him, right? So it's it's great opportunity for me to just reinforce, like, oh, 
you know, oh, we died. Okay, well, let's let's try it again, you know. Or like we'll be trying to do an obstacle, and he's like, I can't do it. I can't do this. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, just just keep trying. Like it's we're we're gonna get it. We we just keep trying. It's like the mentality. I wish I could apply to something like Elden Ring, like that thing I'm trying to like help him have that I don't, so that he can play you know, some of these games that are cons- going to either con- now considered, you know, game of the year for a year, but, you know, 10 years from now, one of the game best games of all time, right? Like, it'll be in a top 100 list for sure. Like, El- we're talking Elden Ring, right? Like, I can't play that game because I can't get past that part of my brain where I just lose it. But if I can catch him early enough, maybe I can prevent him from falling in, following in the footsteps that I went. You got to break the system. You got to remold them, you know, break the cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, John, have you, uh, have you played it takes two? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, it's, it interests me quite a bit. Um, unfortunately, like my girl's not really much of a gamer and, uh, my son, uh, kind of got her genetics when it comes to that. Um, he, He's not really like he doesn't really have the hand eye coordination to actually like like uh do things without looking at the buttons or like he doesn't understand that this one thumbstick does one thing, this one thumbstick does the other thing, you know, like this one moves your camera, this one moves you around. Um slowly, slowly I'm trying to get him into it. He's six now. Um, but he will eventually eventually get it. Uh, I have to, I have to do this for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if he's yeah. not into games, he's not into games, whatever, but I'm going to try my hardest to get him into it. He asked to play games a lot and like, we'll, we'll let him like, we'll download like a Paw Patrol game and he'll understand like there's, there's not really like camera controls in those games. They kind of aim it towards like you move with this stick, the camera moves for you and you jump with X and that's it. That's all you do. Maybe a button prompt will come up on the screen where you have to like, hold down square to like drill through something as like one of the characters. Um, it takes two, uh, is actually like kind of designed for something like that, where maybe it's one person who does game a lot and the other person is more like not much of a gamer. I think that's what the game is designed for is not just for bonding, but for like, teaching somebody else how to play a game. And it, I think that's fantastic. And like Anthony was saying, like from what I've seen, like this does look like a fantastic game and it does look like a lot of fun. Um, can't really see myself like playing it anytime soon. Maybe one day down the road, like one of my other kids, my other kids are like big gamers. So like I could probably play with them, but yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it, it's definitely going to stay on charts for a long time like it, it, it does look like a really good game and i've seen seen some clips from it and it's it's absolutely hilarious too and and heartwarming and yeah it's uh maybe i'll watch a playthrough or something to like get get some of the experience you know yeah game. one thing too is oh, good the uh every obstacle every boss fight every encounter if you will each character like the male and the female they have a designated job they have to do and they're both different a lot of the times. So one of the things too is that's great is each one, there's usually one that is either slightly easier than the other or significantly. So some of them, say if me playing as the guy, I have the easier job, like we just swap controllers temporarily. I know um, one thing, oh man, so I forgot to mention this at the beginning. So when I, I bought it, I downloaded it, right? And I'm like, well, I have my other PS5 controller. It has a slight drift, but I'm like, I'm pretty good gamer. I'll just use my drift controller. I'll let him use this. He supervised while he uses it because like he plays my PS4. I don't let him touch my PS5. But I'm like, he's playing with me. I'll make sure he washes his hands before, whatever. I boot it up. I go to use this controller. And it's like, when you're sitting here, nothing's happening. But if you click right, as soon as you let go of the stick, it just shoots this way, like, so say on my PS5 menu, I'll click right once, and it'll go left three times, like, on the tiles, and it, it's so bad. I'm like, I just bought this game, and now I, there's no way for me to play it, but then I remember when I bought it, it gave me access to the PS5 and PS4 versions, 
And you can use a PS4 controller on the PS5 as long as the game is a PS4 game. So I deleted the game, downloaded the PS4 version, and then we were off to the races. But uh, where did I go? Oh, yeah. So we'd switch controllers temporarily. So he was using my PS5 controller. And I'm like, okay, be gentle on the buttons, okay? Like, these are expensive. Like, I have multiple PS4 controllers, but I only have one working PS5 control. Um, but, yeah, so the point is, if the job's too hard for him and mine's easier, we just swap controllers. We And then, you know, we still end up doing it a bunch of times. But we just, so we don't make too much progress every night. But so it might be. It could potentially take us like a month or two to beat it, but it's been a good time. What were you going to say, Krista? I didn't mean to interrupt you. No worries. Uh, so I was going to say, I wonder if the Game Grumps ever did a playthrough. And I checked, and it looks like they did at least did. 12 episodes of it. And yep. also in 2021, it won Best uh, Game at the Game Awards. It takes two. Oh, nice. Um, I can see why. Yeah, it won a couple of things. Uh, uh, best family game, best multiplayer game. So it's really cool. No, the the whole game itself. I, uh, I I like to see. I would like to see like more games take that approach, right? Kind of like become like almost an entry level for people who aren't comfortable with gaming to be like guided through with somebody who is like comfortable with gaming. I think that'd be really sweet. Um, any final thoughts before we move on? I'm just imagining Anthony's like be gentle with this control it like be gentle with the buttons and then he's playing as luna snow just mashing her i had a thought i was like you know what maybe like for like christmas i'll get like link like his very own like dual sense controller and then i'm like i'm gonna do that but then anthony's just gonna use it because it's brand new <laughs> 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 like, here you go link <laughs> <laughs> as i open up my brand new controller <laughs> i'll get i'll get like the hot pink one you know <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> okay man i don't even care <laughs> all right uh, hot pink's in dude all right so uh yeah yeah uh any final thoughts on it takes you or are we all good yeah all good yeah great right. game definitely <laughs> recommend it all right so moving on to kingdom hearts 3 uh finished this this week got the platinum completed everything uh yeah john you were completely right in terms of it being an easy platinum like compared to like one and two like it was very much a cakewalk the only thing like that added to the timer is obviously the rng of like getting materials for crafting and synthesis and all that but yeah i was telling anthony uh last week when the game first came out i automatically played on proud mode because one and two required you to play on the highest difficulties for the trophies and I didn't realize at the time there was no trophy tied to difficulty. So last week I was just like, when I decided to go for the platinum for number 90, I was like, I'm going to just start fresh. I'm just going to play on easy difficulty, speed through the game, go through all that. Um, but yeah, I, the gameplay, I forgot how polished it. They got the gameplay in that game, like very smooth. The attractions, I've kind of grown more, f- more like high on. Like at the time, I felt like they were kind of like broken. Like when I played proud mode, I felt like, granted, I used them, I think, a lot as a crutch, like to kill like big groups of enemies. But playing it more on an easier difficulty, like I kind of appreciated them more as just like a way to kind of freshen up the gameplay every now and then with different styles of like using them. Um, and even like the shot lock system with how each all the keyblades have their own specific abilities and stuff like that was really cool. Um but yeah, no, I had a I had a good time revisiting three. Uh I ended up buying the upgrade to get access to the uh the full orchestra performance of like all the songs and stuff like that. So eventually I gotta get around to watching that. But no, I had a good time and I was glad to make that platinum number ninety. Uh what were your thoughts on Kingdom Hearts three? John? um it's it is a good game um probably not the best in the series i found like uh i i found like the whole time playing i felt like things like something was missing like i felt like it just didn't you know like have enough um like there was plenty of worlds plenty of like enemy variety plenty of like uh like different like you said each keyblade has its own thing and the attractions kind of disappointed me because like 
they were different from the the summons and the forms and stuff that I was used to. Like in my my favorite probably is Kingdom Hearts too. So I mean that's a hard one to like really beat because you had all the different forms and you can unlock like that final form eventually. And um, I did platinum the game. Uh, I found like the materials weren't as hard to get as they were in especially kingdom hearts one i tried to platinum that one and i eventually gave up because there was one that i needed from uh you know those like random mushroom dudes that like yeah. appear <laughs> yeah i needed one from them and i just wasn't getting it and i was doing it for like hours and hours and hours and hours so it's just like no nah, i'm not gonna platinum this one uh kingdom hearts 3 was just such an easy platinum i had to like 100 percent it once i got to that point where i'm like oh i only need a couple more trophies like i i just went for it and I didn't really have a hard time getting uh, like the items that I needed for the crafting thing, which was pretty cool, pretty refreshing. My biggest complaint about Kingdom Hearts 3 is probably the lack of... Uh, like, the, there's these huge worlds that you're going to. Like, for example, uh, the, the Toy Story world or the Monsters, Inc. world, where it's a gigantic like map, gigantic world. But that space isn't really utilized you know you'll you'll like run around and like there's like uh like random encounters with enemies and stuff but otherwise like i felt i felt like it was lacking like the it's gorgeous like graphically uh combat is really polished and nice but yeah i felt like they could have done a lot more with it and i feel like that's because maybe they were rushed they did end up adding more to the game with the DLC, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I feel like a game shouldn't have to rely on its DLC to be a full experience. You know what I mean? Um, I do recommend it. Like, it is a good game, and it is uh, a little convoluted with the story, but I mean the whole Kingdom Hearts series, <laughs> series is. Um, but if if you were to, like just get into kingdom hearts play one play two like they're fantastic games and if you get into three you'll definitely notice like you'll you'll definitely notice like something's missing you'll feel like something's missing for sure i think one of the biggest things that i felt was missing when all was said and done was like like obviously i've said it time and time again the final fantasy characters but the biggest thing is the like that boss fight you know like when you look at kingdom hearts one and two sephiroth like those fights were incredibly difficult like this game very much lacked like that one boss that really made you go like fucking got it like i, I kill i beat him and all that like i think th i think that is one of the significant things it was definitely missing for sure um anthony you talked about this a bit last week but uh any any other thoughts on kingdom hearts uh not necessarily. Uh, I did end up downloading it on my PS4 because I was thinking of giving Link a go at it because just to see if he could make that big of a leap into uh, a, a more action-oriented game. Um, obviously, like there's some action, I guess, and it takes two, but it's definitely more a platformer puzzle game, I would say. Um, whereas this feels more the action vibe. Unfortunately, the issue I have going on with the PS4, um, it just ha it's happening so frequently now that like I did boot it up and I was gonna let him try, but we didn't even get to like the first sequence of combat, like from the intro to the game, because it started making that sound again. So I'm gonna have to call the the local shop and figure that out when I have the time and money to do it. So unfortunately, I do have my OG PS4 somewhere in this closet here um it's not readily accessible because I, I tried so i'm gonna have to pull the whole closet out to get to it so when i'm not lazy i'm gonna do that it will it's not as powerful but uh it's still a ps4 right so it, the game will run so i won't have much to say on it until i i stop procrastinating and pull that sucker out because i'm gonna get this one fixed it just probably won't be for at least a month, you know? So, but there will be something to say at some point and hopefully it'll be positive. Um, not, not about the game, just about his experience with it. Um, Cause I don't know how well he'll do, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping it, it works out pretty good when I do get around to having him play it. 
Um, I'm not a Kingdom Kingdom Hearts guy myself, but it's got the Disney characters, right? Like even right away, like just in the intro to the game and stuff, like he's like, he looks at me, he's like, "Was that Mickey?" <laughs> he's like, "That's Goofy." <laughs> right? so, and then, yeah, so he definitely already can establish a connection to the game just from watching like Mickey Mouse Funhouse and stuff. So, uh. I am looking forward to seeing if he can, because that is a gateway to like so many other games, right? Like, um, like he'll just skyrocket in experience. I think if his interest with the Disney characters is enough for him to persevere and get used to the, the action, aspect. Um, but yeah, probably, maybe next week or sorry, maybe this week I'll do that, because I do want to delve into Stellar Blade a bit and. Uh, It'll be a lot easier to do when I when I'm sitting down in the evening if he also has something to sit next to me and play. And with the PlayStation doing this, man, it's like he only gets like 45 minutes of time, and then it starts doing it. And I gotta shut it off. So I'll, I might pull it out this week. So maybe next week uh, I might have something to say. But I will say too, um, like obviously I know like you you don't want to spend money right now. Uh, I think it is on sale. The Remind DLC. I was going over this a bit last week, but it comes with like two like when you start a new game it comes with uh two options for menus one's for like making the difficulty insanely crazy like enemies do more damage but the other one is like it's called like easy mode and it has things like majority of enemies are insta killed uh you take three times like less damage you deal like three times more damage so like say if like if you do hop it in this week um and like he like he wants to give it a try but he's finding like it frustrating yeah i think it was on sale for like 15 bucks like right now which is like it's still like a bit but like it's something that might be able to make that experience smoother for him and in turn like make him like going to you a lot less being like what do i do here what do i do here kind of thing like obviously like the puzzles like 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 the, the finding stuff, you'll still probably need help and guidance there, but the combat would be a lot more streamlined for him. Because all you have to do is just hit an enemy with like a keyblade, pretty much. Would you say it was. Uh, uh, it's the Remind DLC. Oh, like for the DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's like one of the things they added to the game with it. And I think, John, did you play the Remind DLC? Uh, no. No, I didn't end up playing it. By the time it came out, I had already platinumed the game, so I just was like, eh. I was I contemplated like doing the DLC, but by the time all was said and done, I was like, I kind of just want to move on to something different, you know? Like, I think eventually I'll go all through right. and check it out. Add it to my wish list, so nice. it's easier to find when I get to it. Yeah, that's not bad, 15 bucks. Yeah, he does have um, we have like a very simple, like core yeah. list for him, where he gets five bucks at the end of the week if he does it all, uh, and he does have ten bucks worth. I mean, I haven't given it to him because he wanted to do Robux for Roblox, which I would purchase digitally. So I haven't physically given him any cash yet. But uh, maybe if he likes it, I'll be like, "Hey, man, you have ten bucks in allowance. Like, I'll meet you halfway." spend the, the I'll, I'll pay for the rest if you want to get it but we'll, we'll see we'll see yeah, if he if he's digging in there yeah. <laughs> well that's that's the thing yeah you don't you definitely don't want to play like or pay like that fee if he's just like within like like 30 minutes he's kind of like done with it right uh, you want to yeah. see yeah i would say like maybe a world or two if he's committed like that'd be a good indicator because like the first couple worlds like aren't too crazy like they're pretty just like straightforward like traverse town is very light and then you start off like with only a ch like a decent chunk of uh olympia if i remember correctly so yeah it's not too complicated next up we have uh so the run got next was announced so it's from play by play studios it's three verse three in full court hoops attitude style and skills of street ball culture spiritual successor to the nba street franchise uh it's expected to launch early 2025 on steam and consoles 
You build a roster of diverse, larger than life street ballers, each with their own strengths, weaknesses, and a customized move set to fit their specific play style. It's from uh, former EA developers working on it. Mike Young, the creative director, spent the first half of his career working on the EA sports label games, including all four NBA Street games. Uh, so I know we're not the sports bunch, uh, but I immediately added this one to the list because back when I was a kid, like around the PS2 era, there were games I played the crap out of that typically weren't my style. You had like the NHL hits games. You had, I think it was the Madden blitz, the NFL blitz games, and then the NBA street games and the street games were just so much fun. Like the cartoon, the art style to it. I just played the crap out of it. I think it was NBA G, uh, G, or uh, NBA street two specifically the one I played the most out of, but I'm actually kind of excited for this. I might, pick it up to just kind of relive those days. Um, uh, John, what were your thoughts on this? Definitely not a sports game guy, but like uh, on the GameCube, I used to play like NHL hits a lot. I'm always into sports games when they add like a certain twist to it. Like, come on, you get to check somebody out of the rink into the stands. Like I, Anytime they add like a spin to sports games, like Mario sports games, I, I dig them a lot just because they're not actually played like the sport. Uh, NHL hits, like I said, was one of my like favorite GameCube games like uh, growing up. Um, NBA, NBA, uh, NBA Street was uh, good too. I do remember dabbling that in that a little bit. I watched the trailer for this and instantly I'm like, is this like a is this like a basketball like a hero sports game? Like <laughs> it looks good. It looks really good. I don't like the insensitivity towards Canadians. Uh with that one character Zamboni. Like we're not all we're not all Zambonis, okay? We're not all named after hockey equipment. So if they could stop that, that'd be great. Uh or I'll boycott the game. That that's fair puck. That's that's fair. Yeah. Uh stick, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so uh zero interest. Um I briefly played some hockey game at Mike's place growing up. The only thing I remember is it had a dope soundtrack. That's all I can really remember. Um so yeah, sports games aren't for me. However, the name did sound familiar and I pulled up my game collection on price charting. And I do have the first NBA Street on PS2, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, no, nothing here for me, really. Uh, but I mean, if it becomes like a PS Plus game at some point, Chris, and you're you're into it a little bit, like I'd be willing to jump in. I just wouldn't be willing to jump in with my dollars. Oh, know, no, that's like fair. Our Canadian dollars. <laughs> our hard-earned Zamboni riding Canadian dollars. <laughs> Our hard earned hard earned seventy eight cents to the US dollar Canadian dollars. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Uh any final thoughts on this before we move on? Nice little quick one. Fuck fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, bud. Fuck, fuck yeah, yeah, bud. bud. All right. So the next one, uh unfortunately Mark's not here to get all excited about this one. Uh Helldivers 2 Escalation of Freedom announcement. So it's the biggest update yet for Helldivers 2, and it launches August 6th. There is a new Super Helldive Combat Rating 10 described as the most challenging and most relentless dive difficulty yet, also bringing new mission objectives and bigger enemy outposts for both bots and bugs, new enemies and dangerous swamps, uh, the big guy from the original Helldivers creates some new challenges. No longer can you run from the bugs. When the Impaler is around, big, imposing, and destructive, it demands to be dealt with. Um, also new among the Terminated ranks is the Spore Charger, as if the regular old Charger wasn't scary enough. The Spore Charger is shrouded in the fog to obscure its location until it's right up on you, Helldiver. Lastly, the Terminated Alpha Commander which is a supercharged brood commander that's bigger, meaner, and doesn't hesitate to call in other bugs for backup. 
Uh, they also brought in some uh, uh, an automaton. Uh, their ranks are growing too with the addition of the formidable rocket tank as well as some other bot surprises they'll be throwing our way. Um, explore the swamps, but not as you know them, with rolling fog and untamed flora. The blackened trees obscure the light, and the air itself feels haunted. Keep your flashlight handy, as visibility is limited and light is key. The enemy could be hiding anywhere amongst the undergrowth. Uh, there is a new system also added to try to combat griefing. Uh, they implemented a system where if a player is kicked, they will spawn into a new session as the host with all of the team's loot from the previous sessions all items can now be picked up by the player before extraction the squad doing the kicking will see a mes message in the chat widget that a player has been kicked yet their loot remains unchanged so like they still get bonuses but like the people who's getting kicked doesn't suffer from it at the very least uh john what are your thoughts on this uh once you said like um hiding it like uh the the darkness one with the flashlights and stuff that instantly like brought me to ewok hunt and like how fun that was i mean it's not going to be other players playing as these enemies but that instantly caught my attention and that's probably what's going to get me back into hell divers um because that sounds dope yeah it is it, it is really interesting and again i will give props to the developers them can keeping up with the the free content updates obviously their money is being earned from like the stores like the war bonds and stuff which like to their credit can also you can get the currency to buy those by playing the game granted like it's a grind to get that currency but props to them with just how they do this uh i i'm not currently urged to hop in and go check this out when it comes but i am curious to see like yeah, like if you hop in, and I know for sure Mark's definitely going to be hopping in. What you guys kind of think about it, and where like the vibe is at for it there. Uh, Anthony, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, it all sounds really cool. Um, I probably won't jump in. I don't know. It not much about the game attracts me besides the co op, and we're just. I feel like we're eating really well right now co-op wise at least for for my tastes so there was a brief period where i was like oh you know once it goes on sale at a decent price i might jump in with you guys but i think i don't know if it's gone on sale yet and if it has it, pr it went on sale i think either only mark was playing or even he dropped off so yeah the time window for the likelihood of me trying the game is i think past um but, I mean, it's great to see that they're still putting out content. Like, the game's still beloved. Like, the even most recent, you know, reviews on Steam is still, like, very positive or overwhelming positive. So, they're doing something right. I don't know what their player numbers look like. But the reality is, it was never a, a big team. And they didn't expect their game to blow up as big as it did. So, like, even if the no the player base numbers settled on, like, one tenth of what they were that's still probably more than enough for a healthy player base for that game so love to see it especially from a studio that's you know uh working with uh, they're, they're working with sony right they're not owned by sony yeah they're not yet owned by sony but yeah they work with them they were yeah so i mean as pri primarily you know playstation user it's great to see sony's got some stuff that's cooking you know but uh, yeah, this is no, nothing here for me. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on? Do you have a problem with democracy, Anthony? Um, is that banana still there? I can't say. Cause I, if I, I just gotta make one phone call, John. Uh, don't just make one phone call. Don't do it. <laughs> You're gonna die. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> don't call the banana. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Concord gets a limited edition dual sense controller. Uh, Concord is joining the ranks of video games that have had the limited edition dual sense controllers. Um, it releases the same day as the game, which is August 23rd. 
Uh, I just wrote down like uh, other games that have gotten limited editions. Uh, you had Hogwarts Legacy had one, God of War Ragnarok, Final Fantasy 16. Uh, not a game, but the Bron James had his own controller, and then uh, also um, uh, Spider Man Two had its uh, limited edition controller. Uh, but yeah, um, it's interesting to see that. Like, I mean. Like, despite everything going on, like, with, like, how people are kind of talking about Concord, uh, it seems to be that Sony has a lot of faith in this game. And I think it would be safe to say if Concord is getting a limited edition controller, we'll probably see Astrobot get one. Like, for sure, like, when the time comes, Ghost of Tsushima 2 has got to be getting one. And Wolverine has to be getting one. Like, those have to be givens. But to PlayStation's credit, I'm going to throw a little shade right now. Um, thank you for making controllers be purchasable and not have like a Deadpool and Wolverine Xbox controller that you can only win via sweet steak, or like sweepstake where like only one person can get it. Like, I don't understand the pro like doing all the development to make those controllers and only make one when like you could easily have so many people buy those pieces of hardware. But anyway, yeah. I digress. Um, Anthony, what are your thoughts on this? So I'm not, I'm not a guy that's about the, the, the these c- kinds of controllers. Just because if I buy them, I know I'm not going to use them. To me, they become collector's items because, like, I don't know if the like, if they've figured out a, a workaround for this. But I know, like, in the past, like issues with these is like you buy them, they're cool, but you use them, and these fancy designs and stuff they wear, right? And they get ruined by by use over time. Um, so unless that's different now, like generally I don't have interest in them, even though they look cool. Unless like I want to buy just to have. But a lot of times there's a lot better things you can spend your money on if you're just getting it to keep in a box, you know, uh, for display purposes. So I usually steer away from these, but um, the design does look pretty cool. The, the, the color palette, like the color coding they used on it, it's not doesn't mesh with like my interests um but the design itself i think is pretty cool it's uh, uh i don't know much about concord so i don't know what about this says concord but i'm sure we'll learn more about that like once um the game releases uh and yeah i i, I do question like you were saying chris like they how you, they you think they must have some faith in this game from doing this what i'm wondering is if the plans to make this precede precede the 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 way that the game has been received so far as in like this was planned before people start giving their opinions of saying it's like more of like a six out of ten kind of vibe you know um and then that makes me wonder like if they're as sony right now are kind of like fuck this thing's not going to sell really well or not um but who knows? Because as far as I know, like the main criticism I've heard of the game is really like the fact that it's forty bucks. Because um, you know we have Marvel Rivals, which I know not till next year, but it's free, right? Um, but I've heard the game plays good. Like the some people nitpick the characters, but like the game itself looks good. And and I think you played it, right, Chris? You yeah, said you I played. Yeah, it? I did play it during the beta, and I had a really good time with it. Like I, I've I've got it pre-ordered. Like I'm going to play it when it comes out i I did have fun with it but like i can see where people are coming at with the free-to-play aspect because like it is hard to get your foot in the door for like 50 bucks like Mm -hmm. like only so many people are willing to put that down and but yeah like i i think like it's kind of too late for them to swerve to like go immediately free to play but i feel like a couple months down the line this might go free to play yeah, yeah. I mean, they they might make some good decisions as far as in-game uh, monetization to compensate and just either drop the price or, or maybe not even go free to play, but make it free to play if you're a PS subscriber, yep. right? Because mm-hmm. that would still net them a little extra money. Because um, they might get. Oh, I don't know if that would earn people to subscribe just to play it, but it would at least limit that. Oh, if you're not going to subscribe, oh no, you'd have. You'd have to subscribe to play online, so never mind that. That's a moot point. But uh, 
yeah, I have a feeling they're they're right now talking about potential changes that have to do with the pricing. But you're right; I don't think there's not much they can really do this late in the game. Mm-hmm. But we'll see how it goes. I think once people get like a bigger crowd gets in and and plays it and kind of meets the characters and stuff, I think that's the key. These games are all about the characters. Like as long as the gameplay is good, like it's the characters that need to sell the game. And the unfortunate thing is one of the the ones that it's closely compared to right now, Marvel Rival. At least there might maybe they're not as comparable, but to me, just thinking it's like all of the characters in Marvel Rivals are almost are almost all known characters that people have attachments to. Maybe not all of them, but whereas these these is like new characters, no one knows them, right? So I'm I'm curious how they're gonna go about trying to attach people to characters and like draw them in and how you know I, I imagine you guys played a lot of overwatch at some point like yeah, you probably have a good chunk yeah yeah like they obviously did something right as far as getting people attached to characters not just how they played but i imagine like their behaviors or voice acting maybe some some lore in, i don't know um it is blizzard right so i imagine there's some sort of lore with the game that adds more attachment to these characters so we'll have, just have to wait and see but as far as the control goes it looks pretty pretty slick but i'm just not a collector of, con- of decorative controllers no, although i did really want that final fantasy 16 one i, I never got it but that yeah, was the closest i came i came to getting one yeah because that one was messed up because it was only available through i think playstation direct which was the only us yeah yeah uh john what are your thoughts on this i think this controller looks amazing i probably won't buy it and i'm definitely not into uh like getting concord at all but man like that that is beautiful uh i want to add on to what anthony was saying about like overwatch and like how they get people attached to the character um Basically, they release little cinematics almost in vain of like Pixar style, like mini movies that you could watch with like backstories of the characters. And most of the time, they were like tear jerkers or there's extremely entertaining. Like, they did a really good job of getting people into the characters. Uh, Concord kind of adds story to the game. Like, like for example, the, the teaser, like the release teaser kind of like got you into the characters and showed you like who like almost like their their personalities and stuff um as i see more of that maybe i'll get into it eventually but like uh chris i think it was chris was saying like 50 dollars is a hard like hard way to get people into the game i i don't think i don't think i'll uh end up playing it i don't think i'll be buying this controller either but like it is gorgeous like it does look really nice Well, like, you never know, like, going back to what Anthony said about them designing this controller before they heard the word of mouth, like, if unfortunately Concord, say, doesn't hit well, and this, the controller itself doesn't, say, sell well, this might be one of the rare limited edition controllers you might eventually be able to pick up for, like, on a sale and all that. I think they did right by not just, like, putting a giant like word concord on the controller like you could easily pass this off as anything you Mm -hmm. know what i mean i feel like the controller might just sell on its own like people won't even be into concord and they'll buy this controller for sure oh yeah Yeah, like the the vibe i I don't know if this is its intention or if you guys receive this but looking at it it almost looks like to some degree like you're sitting in the cockpit of a ship looking out like the window and those are like the stars and stuff if that is the intention that's how i receive it like that could like you're saying you could almost equate that to like any game that has to do with like space like even like think star wars right or maybe some lesser uh, ip but uh yeah it definitely looks pretty cool you know what they should have done thinking about it now like they should have in a bit of a pivot when like with this controller they should have turned it into like a bundle where it's like instead of like the typical I think eighty nine ninety nine for a controller, it's like a hundred dollars gets you the controller and gets you Concord. 
Because like basically people are paying for a controller, paying an extra ten dollars, get a fifty dollar game, and then like you kind of like shuffle the people like you guys said who don't really care about Concord, but like the design of the controller, they're like, well, I got this free game, I might as well check it out, right? I think yeah. I think that would have been probably a good move on their part. All right. Yeah, I agree. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on? <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh to- the next topic is stellar blade summer update um a small area for summer vacation has been added for a limited time at the great desert oasis gift eve a tiny break uh summertime limited background music at the great o- desert oasis you can still listen to the previous oasis soundtracks at the base camp uh newly added object interaction with the sunbed two new outfits and one new accessory have been added and can be obtained from Clyde's shop at the Oasis. So, Anthony, you hopped back in a, a little bit today, enough to get the, the outfits, obviously. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so the only thing I've seen so far is the, the two outfits or whatever, uh, which I bought and made, put them on, ran around a bit, you know, lowered the camera, full sprint, you know, as I do. Um uh, I haven't touched anything outside of that yet, though. Um, I'm going to look up, like, wh- where I got to go for that. Um, but I picked up where I left off. I'm, I'm thinking of finishing the game. I never did finish it. Uh, of course, though, um, I don't know if you recall back when I was playing, when it came out, there are certain sections in the game that are very... Uh, I didn't play them, but from, from what I've seen of, like, Resident Evil games, like, almost Resident Evil feely, like, you're in a situation where you're only using your gun like the th- like your little robot turns into a gun on your hand and you can shoot and like that's all you can use and it's very like dark and s- somewhat puzzly very minimal but it's like just creepy vibes and of course i start up and it's like oh go to this new location go to this thing and then it's another sequence of that like within 10 minutes of me jumping in today so i'm like oh my god so i literally just full sprint like i died numerous times i'm like i just need to speed run this part so that when i actually want to sit down and like jump back in this is behind me so i at least have a gap between if there's another one of these um but i I played for probably like a good two hours today and i definitely like depending on what we're doing after this i might jump back on it and uh depending on what we're all saying but uh yeah, I, it's it's great. Like the the combat's great. I love it. Um, but yeah, the summer the summer th- uh, event stuff. I got to look up like where to go for all the extra stuff because it's not just the outfits, right? Like there's yeah, it said there was an accessory and some background music tracks you can obtain, and there's just like the new things you can interact with, like the sunbed. Yeah, so I got to go find the sunbed. That's my my next goal when I jump on. Yeah, so the past couple of days, ever since I finished Kingdom Hearts 3, I've been kind of torn of like, because like obviously we'll play like our multiplayer stuff like Marvel Rivals, and I like to balance it out with the single player experience. I've been kind of torn on what I've been wanting to play. And then like I saw the news on this update coming out, and I was like, that's really cool of them to do that. So I started toying around with the idea of playing it. And a while back, Anthony had offered generously to like lend it to me. And I was going to take him up on it, but then I was just like, I feel like me playing through it again and talking about it eventually on the pod, and then also the new two specific outfits that were added, I feel like those would probably reignite his like desire to start playing again. So I downloaded like the full trial through PlayStation Premium. I was like, I'll just see where I'm at when that's the two hours are done. Like, Do I want to keep playing? Do I want to commit? And then within that hour, I was just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm picking it up and this is going to be like my next big focus for a little bit. Because that's the thing, I'm, I'll get into what I'm planning on playing in August. Like, obviously, I already said Concord earlier, but there is a big gap going for a little while until there's some new games I want to play. So I'm just, and I want to play new experiences. I think that's a big thing. And that's what excites me about Stellar Blade. It's something I haven't experienced yet. So. Um, John, what are your thoughts on all this? Uh, Stellar Blade is still a game that I want to pick up 
and play eventually. I think I'm waiting for a sale. I'll end up getting it. Um, I think it's cool. Is it free DLC? Like, is it free? Yep. Update? Yeah, it's a free update. So I mean, good guy developers like doing that. So yeah, I think I think maybe either either I'll cave and end up buying it, or I'll just wait for a sale. But yeah, it's still something I really want to get into. Being being like a, I know I know it's like a weird comparison, but being like a Souls fan, like I definitely definitely want to uh at least give this game a try i think i'll do what you're doing chris and uh try the the, the free trial thing mm-hmm. first and then uh yeah yeah it's nice like it as, like when you play the two hours like you, when you're it's it's just like playing the full game like you're popping the trophies as you're going and all that and then once you like pick it up you're just continue off where you left off honestly i, I gotta kind of start utilizing <laughs> those full trials more like pretty dope one of the um, the two outfits too. Uh, stop me if if you said this or, like if you just said this, Chris. But one of the two outfits. So prior to release, um, there was an outfit that a picture of an, one of the outfits going around, and it was like like a bathing suit style thing, and it had like you know a V cut where it showed cleavage and stuff. But then when the game came out, and people got that outfit in game, there was like an undershirt covering the cleavage. And people were, as they do, they were like, Sony made them uh, censor it, blah, 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 blah. So one of these two outfits that came out, one of them, it's the exact same outfit that's in the game. The one that people were claiming got nerfed. But it's like an unnerfed, uncensored. That one got censored. It's the exact same outfit, but uncensored, basically. So now it's the question is, like, did they just hear the the people and they're like okay here's the outfit the original outfit or was the the picture they saw like an unofficial like leak of some sort that was like a planned future release outfit or something i don't know that's actually but... a good point now that you mention it because that, that's the thing a lot of times like the teams will have like roadmaps and like a photo like say showcasing it so, like maybe that was planned for a roadmap that photo and the whole controversy around it, they just decided to go quiet with it and just waited, just release it with the thing, maybe. Yeah. Uh. But either way, I'm glad it's here because it's great. <laughs> All right. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on? All right. No, so last topic. What games are you excited to play in August? So we have Pepper Grinder, August 6th. Cat Quest 3, August 8th. Uh, Madden NFL 25, August 16th. Uh, Black Myth Wukong, August 20th. Dustborn, August 20th. Concord, August 23rd. Gundam Breaker, August 29th. Visions of Mana, uh, August 29th. And Star Wars Outlaws, August 30th. I'll go real quick. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Black Myth Wukong, Concord, and Outlaws. And like those are like the, the three games where like I'm just trying to bide that time till the twentieth hits and then I just go full crazy into all three of those. Um the question is will I be able to beat hopefully platinum black myth Wukong by the time L Loss comes out? It's a tight window, ten days. We'll see how she goes. Uh John, what are your what games are you looking forward to playing? Uh if I have to pick I would probably pick either Visions of Mana or uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, unfortunately, next month is going to kind of be like a backlog month for me. I mean, I mean, this month has been pretty much a backlog month uh, for me besides Marvel Rivals. Um, but yeah, uh, Star Wars Outlaws looks crazy and incredible. So that that probably would be my first choice. Uh, and being being like a uh, uh, mana fan I, I like i could see myself uh eventually getting uh visions of mana all right all right uh what are your th- what games are you excited to play anthony um the visions of man mana actually looks really cool i i briefly dabbled in one of the earlier ones like it was like a remaster or just a port i can't remember that i picked up on something ps4 
four maybe i can't remember but i dabbled with it a bit it was kind of cool but i was like well whatever um but just looking at this one like this one looks really cool i, I the, some of the combat sequences look a little like sluggish like slow um but then some of it doesn't so like i, I definitely want to see more of it and I'd, uh, i'm gonna wait to see what the reviews look like it won't be something I, i'll pick up this month um but it's something I definitely want to see how it turns out because it's depending on, on how the reviews go and what the, what the reviews say more so rather than what the number is because, you know, the numbers are somewhat worthless these days, I find. But uh, if people are saying, you know, the gameplay is good because that's really the only concern in some of the combat sequences I've seen, the, gra the, 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 the art style and the colors, like... The, the the boss fights they they show in in the in some of the footage like look really cool so um it's definitely on my radar which it wasn't until like pretty much today because i remember hearing about this game a while back but um yeah and then the other one is uh cat quest Qu cat quest 3 <laughs> i played the first one on mobile years ago and it was pretty fun a good a nice comfy mobile game um i do happen to have some some uh money in my steam wallet so um i'm gonna wait for reviews to see what people are saying but it's only 24 dollars so or no it's 10 percent off. is that 10 percent off if i pre-order it oh yeah that'll probably be like a pre-order okay so price. the full price is 26 bucks that's super reasonable and if the reviews are good, it's definitely something I could sit down for a couple hours and pound out. So the combat looks, like in the footage, the combat looks way better than what the first game had. The first game, that was kind of what held it back, I found, um, from being better than it was. So th this game is a potential pickup for me. Um, but yeah, the other ones, not so much. Like, I'm not a big Star Wars guy. Uh, Black Myth w Wukong. I'm assuming that's a Souls-like based off the footage I saw of it, which is not for me. And then Concord, well, you know, I'm just surprised I'm playing Marvel Rivals. I'm not going to push it. <laughs> yeah, Black Myth, like, from what I've seen of, like, the previews, it's it's not Souls-like. Um, but, like, mm. I, I'll be able to give you a better feel once I've actually played a game myself, because, like, some people like are generous and some people are very restrictive with the use of that term. Uh, True. And then, yeah, outlaws. Like I think I've definitely said this before. One of the things that excites me most is like, uh, it's from the team that made the division games. So that gameplay is going to be fucking. Nice. Um, all right. That has been another successful episode. Of the guy by podcast. I'm Chris. That's Anthony. See you. And John. I just want to say before we go, uh, go get Banana on Steam. It's free. It's a really good game. You just click the banana and nothing else. And so, did I say something wrong? No, 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 no. <laughs> Please tell me you used a banana gun. <laughs> That's he way. clicked the banana, get it? <laughs>